Welcome to another episode of After Sports. Here we delve into the lives of ex sports athletes. We want to know what's going on in their life after their sporting career. And today we are privileged to speak to a very special person. He used to play for the Great Olympics and then he went to play for PSV in Holland and then move on to Saudi Arabia to play for other teams. Let's see what's coming up. My name is Mamia Joa. Today, our guest is a Ghanaian footballer. Born August 7, 1980, he began his career with home base club Great Olympics in 1996. In 1998, he moved to Dutch club PSV Edoven. He was then transferred on loan to Danish club Sikoberg IF, where he played a total of 31 matches and scoring five goals. After his time in Netherlands, he signed a contract with a Tunisian club Stade Tunisien where he played before moving to Saudi Arabian giant Al Shabab and scored 47 goals in a total of three seasons. He represented the Ghana national football team in 2006 African Cup of Nations in Egypt, wearing the number 12 jersey. He played in 10 international matches and scored one goal for the national team. Here to delve into his life after active football is Godwin Atram. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Challenge of the day. The challenge of the day is brought to you by Davis Palace. Who was the first Ghanaian footballer to miss a penalty at the FIFA World Cup? Again, who was the first Ghanaian footballer to miss a penalty at the FIFA World Cup? The winner gets a voucher for a massage, pedicure, manicure, gym, hairdo and many more at Davis Palace. Welcome to the show. Okay, I want to mention your full name. Godwin Michel Platini Atram. Kwe, <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, where from the Michel Platini? Well, I quite done uh, okay. since childhood. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know those days uh, when you used to play football, we call something Unchindi. Okay. And then from there you move to coast football, yeah. not soccer academy like they I have, used yeah. to have now. So everyone must have a foreign name oh, as okay. a good player. Yeah. Yeah, that's those days. So it's normal for everybody. I am. I, I acquired the name Michel Platini from France. From France. So you, you, you got the name yourself or someone gave you the name? No, they gave it to you. They oh, okay. At the they look you at you and... and ah. Oh, I see. Yeah, I said I'm a 10 player. Ah, and you love the name? Of course. So you grew with the name? I grew with the name. <laughs> I did exactly. Exactly what Michel did. Wow. Okay, so let's go into your childhood. Growing up, did you always think you were going to be this big? Well, uh, the vision is very clear. Mm -hmm. um, those who used to know me from childhood, mm. uh, being this way is not a surprise to them. Okay. Yeah, they really knew what I'm about to mm. already mm. than seeing it now. So right. I don't think it's something new to them. Mm. For me, acquiring all those uh, career in football. Mm. Right, but you know that even now, so I'm wondering how it was earlier on, even now, if a child tells a parent that, oh, mommy, when I grow up, I want to be a footballer, it's like they would want to rain, I mean, hailstorm on the person. So during your time, how was it like? Were your parents supportive, your family? Were they supportive of what you wanted to do? Well, it hasn't been easy. Um, those days, as you, everyone knows that uh, footballers are like crooks or vagabonds that's how people exactly. people touch you know exactly. but nowadays it's different even mm. the rich rich men mm. or rich people mm. trying to put their children their into football into, right. that's why we have a lot of soccer academy now mm. but those days no mm. it's only street boys we are one of them mm. even though i'm from a good family mm. but uh, it's only streets who play football we used to have one coach called uh paul latte mm. it's typical for the youth uh, he will tell you that she catch a BHR football, meaning rich people doesn't play, play football. football. Wow. So it was just for those who were, I mean, known to be not rich or on the street or exactly. cobble. So my question really is, how did your parents take you? Were they supported? Were, they all, were, were you ever beaten for going out to play football? Of course, several. <laughs> several times, believe me. Wow. Well, those Wunchendi, now we call it Wunchendi. You have to play, play here, sorry. Play here like morning, 
in the afternoon you uh, have to go to Labadi. Uh, Maybe five o'clock again you have to go to Tema. Uh, so like three times a day. Wow. And your parents will be looking for, for you, you everywhere. 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 Wow. In town. <laughs> so these are the things that cause those people. Yeah. I remember like two, three days ago, uh, there, is, there was a funeral mm -hmm. for one of my, my players, Great Olympics. Oh. One of the boys, Tata, father. So we went to the oh. church at the Roman mm. School uh, Sacred Art. Okay. I went there and I was standing on the road and I was telling the boys that they come up this street. I remember one day my father really beat me. On the street? Like, like, oh yeah, my God. On this <laughs> wow. So it's part of it. Uh, but uh, the good thing about me is that uh, my father used to be a footballer. Oh. So he understands. Oh, okay. Uh, even though I have to go to the school that he tried to control, mm. he still gave me the privilege mm. Mm. to play football. Okay. So uh, I give him a, a big handshake for that. Right. So thank you, Daddy, wherever yeah. you are. So um, how did you manage school in, the, in your childhood class, um, going to play on Chendi and all that? How did you manage? Did you ever skip school? It's really a big challenge. It hasn't been easy going to school and playing football. Mm. But uh, what I would say is that nowadays it's very important okay. for every child, to go even to if you want to play football, mm. you have to attend school. Okay. Uh, because a lot of our colleagues are really suffering mm. from this time. Okay. Uh, I am blessed and I thank God that I had even another godmother mm. who really uh, put the strict on me. Mm -hmm. He restricted me mm. so seriously mm. to go to the school. So. There was a time that I put football aside for like almost two to three years. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then high school. Oh, okay. So what, what level did you get in education? Uh, I completed the uh, form five. Oh, form five. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. So um, what was the first the first team you played for? I mean, from childhood. Where was from, the first? I started from uh, all in baby schools. Okay. How uh, old were you then? I was about... 12, 14 years. 12, 14, yeah. okay. I okay. started from under 14. Under 14. And then uh, we were graduated to under, under 15, okay. and then under 17. Mm. But uh, after the under 14, we were already in the Great Accra National Selected Site okay. in Ghana. Okay. That's me, Laye, Apia, mm. all of the names that you know. Oh, we okay. We grown up together from, from scratch. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, all of them yeah, are, all of are your yeah. friends. But was there someone in particular who held your hand? To, go, um, to enter into the under 14 before you went to the next level? No, no, no. Football is everywhere. We have been around already mm. in those Wunchendi and things. So, even the, 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 the chairman of the coach mm. football, mm. that's how they selected their players. Oh, okay. Yes, they go around and then they see where, like, you see the children playing mm. there. Mm. I can even sense a footballer from, from there. The, oh, yeah, okay. From there. So, this is how it is. And that was Chairman Ray from Kowloon Babies, and then uh, uh, it's late. Mm. May so rest in peace. Uh, Coach Tayo Ajime, mm. and then CK. CK is still alive. Oh, okay. Yeah, they have really done a lot in our life. Oh, okay. So you just, uh, you have to put in your best, and then if your best gets you somewhere, you are selected exactly. to go to exactly. the next level. Yeah. Right, we'll go for a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll see what's next. Uh, so after you played for Kowloon Babies, what, what, where, where did you go to? Uh, we played regionals and then uh, we won the cup, mm. Kowloon Babies, for the first time. Ah. Milo Championship. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. And then right. Uh, we were selected to the National Soccer Academy, mm. the first Ghana National Soccer Academy. Wow. We started it. What year was that? That was 1993. 90, 93. 91, 92, 93. Okay. 92, 93. Okay. Okay. And from there, what, what was the next? From there, that's how we got to move to Great Olympics. Oh yeah. Seven okay. of us from Kowloon okay. Babies. Who are who? I'm thinking yeah, that's me, Gordon Trump, Lai Kinson, Jose Boatin, Dan Wei, Christopher Ability, Aule Kwe Junior, and then Nia Yi Amo. Are these all still your friends? They are all my friends. They are still in touch. Still in touch. Okay. Jose so Boatin is actually the Google best trainer of the academy. Oh wow, that's great. Okay. So what, what was the the what was the greatest achievement at the Olympics? For a you. Lot. For you. A lot. I've been uh, 
all time best scorer at that time. Yeah, of course. And then uh, from there, I got a chance also to travel outside. Okay, we'll talk which about is very important. Very, very important. We'll talk about yeah. about that later on. We'll be right back. Right. So we know that you you spent a little over 18 months at um, Olympics, and from there you moved to PSV and Dublin. And but when you got there, because you were, I mean, it's alleged, and we all know that because you were young, they didn't they didn't let you play. No, I did. You did. Yeah. Okay. I went um, through one scout school with the visa. Actually, mm -hmm. yeah, I Soccer Academy. Okay. Yeah, it's my godfather. Okay. I'm the only man with a white father. <laughs> uh, you are special. Yeah. It took me when I was 16 mm, years. Mm, 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 uh, mm, mm. Through some coach I did. Okay. Late. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, uh, he used to be his friend. Mm. And uh, he told him that, hey, I have a very young, talented boy in Ghana mm. uh, from the Ghana National Soccer Academy. Mm. And now he's playing the Olympics. Mm. You can come and have a look. So when he came, Olympics were playing against Kotoko. Okay. And that day, I was the best mm -hmm. in the match. So okay. since then, he took me to PSV and Olympics. Okay. And I signed a contract for five years. Okay. But after your five years, you know, there were um, there were other good teams like FC Bayern Munich, there was AC Milan. Why didn't you join them? But you decided to, you know, play well, for uh, other Arabian um, PSV teams. PSV is also a, a big club in Europe. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, after, you, after your time with PSV. Yeah. I signed a contract for five years, and mm -hmm. on the way, mm -hmm. uh, I started coming to national team under mm -hmm. 17, under 20, under 20, and mm -hmm. then I had a problem mm -hmm. with my work permit, so oh. I couldn't go back when uh. it's time for for them to promote me to the senior side. Oh, I right. couldn't have that chance, so I was loaned to Singapore in Denmark. I've been loaning to different different clubs. Right, right. So my my uh, career in Europe became shaken. That's a problem, and then I end up in Arab football for 13 years. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. For, for all 13 the, years and for all the, the good Middle things East you did countries, over yeah. there. Right now, let's talk about the national team. In 2000, 2006, you were, you were part of the, the guys that qualified us for the World Cup. But when it was time for the selection, you didn't make it. What, what really happened? Yeah, it's really pity for me. But hey, life must go on. Um, I've been in the national team even when I was 16 years. Yeah. That was uh, uh, Abedi Pele time, mm. Kwame Ayu, mm. name them all the big players. Yeah. Tony Yebua, all, uh, all of them. Mm. I joined them in the 1998 qualifier. Right. Yeah, I was the only youth player in Ito Forukwe mm. at that time. Mm. So for me, certain things that happen in Ghana football, I don't take it personal. Mm. It's something that we all fix it mm. and but the good thing is you yourself what will you do for yourself mm. to make it in future mm. that's God in natural <laughs> right I know I know I know and then everybody knows you've said a lot about it, but we really want to know what really happened because anytime we think about it, we are like oh no I mean I, with you Lai and all that I mean, we, we just the three of you just don't understand why you couldn't you couldn't make it for the selection yeah, if you want let to us talk, if you want, we want to talk to about it we won't leave you. In a brief. <laughs> In a brief. I'm sure we won't leave you. Well, uh, it all started from our African Cup okay. in uh, Egypt. Mm. And then uh, there is a slight misunderstanding. And okay. then I decided to take my bag and then go to my club and work. Mm. And then since then, when I came back, Coach Dikovic, final selection, I was out. Yeah. But I was one boy that he really loves. Yeah, a lot. yeah. With character yeah, and passion yeah, in the game. Yeah. He likes me a lot, but it happens. And uh, trust me, I put it behind me and I stood focused that day. Come on. I have to still do what? Make it in life. It World Cup or no World Cup. World Cup of course. Football after life is what matters. Right, but was the misunderstanding your fault? Not really. Not really. But uh, we are human. Of course. Certain things that you will not understand mm. and you get up one day and say no come on hey i won't do it like look at what happened to me in great olympics during my coaching time last year mm. i can decide never to coach olympics again mm. but it's football mm. there must be some challenges and then obstacles on your way that you have to do what stand firm on it and then decide very well for your career so 
Right. Uh, it's okay by me. Uh, I still have my life. I thank God for that. Good help, as you can see. I can, I can see. You're very football. fit. Yeah, of yeah. course. You're very fit. I can still play football. <laughs> You're and, very fit. Uh, among all those players, I was the only one who just decided to stop playing football. Yeah, all yeah, those yeah. Suddenly you just decided to stop. 206. Yeah. The only one who decided to stop football. So, and you are still doing well. Uh -huh. so and you are doing well. You can see that life is very good right. than any other thing in the world. Right. Now, you spoke of coaching. I mean, after you made all that money and you came down, we were thinking we just focus on business. Why did you decide to go into coaching? I mean, with all the insults that comes your way every now and then. I was born in football. Mm. I was born into football. There's nothing that can change it. Mm. Um, I can't do any other business that I don't know mm. much about mm. than to do football. Mm. So that's how I decided that I have to do football. I've been doing it already when even I was a player. I've been having players going outside, mm -hmm. side them, mm -hmm. even when they don't have anybody, I bring them to myself, train them whenever I'm on holidays. Mm -hmm. So this thing has been there mm -hmm. already. So when my godfather called me, I remember my last contract in, in Qatar, he told me that, hey, God will come on at a time. Try and uh, do soccer, soccer academy. Mm -hmm. I know you to be a good coach in future. Right. Come on, do it, and I'll be behind you. Mm -hmm. I'll support you. Mm -hmm. So it gave me the, the motivation and the film to go and do it. Mm. So when I came, I said, hey, come on, hey, I won't train big players again or bring them closer. It's better to, to, to do with the youth. Mm. And I remember that uh, Coach George Lampe mm. of Liberty, yeah. he, he knows what I do already. Mm. And so one time that I went to play with Liberty with the young boys, mm. he said, hey, come on, Godwin, this is what I was expecting for you to do. Right. So it's good, come on, go on. So this is how I started, yeah, and trust okay. me, up to today, I've been very, very grateful to the Almighty God. That I really have almost 50 boys Ooh. who are very talented, Ooh. and I always challenge our football fraternity in mm. Ghana that mm. there are a lot of talents in Ghanaian football. We shouldn't give them frustration. Mm. They shouldn't face mm. any frustration. Mm. Mm. It's all about managerial aspect. Mm. Mm. If they got what they want, and footballers in Ghana, all they need is where to sleep and what to eat. Yeah. And then, trust me, you train them we and are, make it to We are going to talk more about your boys, but I want to know where you want to take your... What's going to be the final destination for your coaching career? Do you just want to train the boys the like this or...? Ultimately. Ultimately. The, the, <laughs> the sky is the limit, so we're going to go for a short commercial break. When we come back, we want to see what's going on in his life after sports. Welcome back. Like I said, right now we are going to know what's going on in his life after the sport. Right. So um, I wanted to go straight into what's happening now after the whole, you know, glorious day. But first of all, I there's something that I really want to ask. What's going on with Olympics? Because there's so much drama. Today this, tomorrow that. We are dissolving. I mean, what what is really the problem with Olympics? Yeah, you're right. Oli Kunso Kunso, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the Wonder Club. Yeah, Oli Kunso Kunso. That's the Wonder Club. It's nothing new to Ghanaians, you know? Mm. It's, there are certain things that happen mostly in Great Olympics. Mm, mm. But uh, what is the most important thing now that uh, I am there and then uh, I'm trying to be professional mm, and do mm. the professional things for the club, mm. which uh, I'm pleading with all the, the fans and uh, everyone mm, in Great Olympics mm, mm, to understand mm, the structure and the planning of the club. Okay. It has been a problem for Great Olympics mm, since, mm, not in our time, but after we have left, mm, that's uh, our generation. Mm, and Oli Lee, 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 Oli Lee, Oli Lee, yeah. their generation, you mm. know, it has been a whole lot of problems. Before Great Olympics is one of the biggest clubs, yeah, of course, yeah. even till now, mm. they are one of the biggest clubs. And uh, I guess few years now, it has been rough very very rough and which uh, now the management and the fans are trying to create a committee mm. as well as the management mm. to stay on it mm. for the club to do and come back to the normal status that everyone used to know for now it's true we play the league and uh, on paper we are relegated mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. true mm. but uh, 
we had a protest case against the FA, which is going on right now. We're supposed to be uh, done a uh, long time ago, long time, yeah. but uh, the FA didn't talk about it, and they tried to start the league, and then the management decided to put injunction on the league. So um, the league board are trying to start the league, but I don't think it's going to happen. Because Why? Olympics is going all the way to fight for their rights. You are going to fight for your right. You know, I realize you are trying to play very safe on telling us exactly what the problem is. But the most important thing is you are all ready to fight for the right of the team. Now, one thing that really bothers me is most of the fans of Olympics love you. They really do love you. But um, for those that are sometimes a bit critical, they go like, um, because you have your own academy, you try to bring your players in. How do you feel when you hear about such things? It doesn't really bother me that mm. much because in life there are certain things that you have to face. Mm -hmm. Criticism is very important very in life. Important. If you are a man and you can't stand the critics, then it's better you find yourself in somewhere else. It's important to stay on the critic way mm. so that you can do what? Plan very well and do everything right mm. for the people. Those who are criticizing, they also have their opinion. Mm. But um, if they have been able to look at things very well, mm. they will see that for a very long time, Great Olympics has not been able to do what? Produce players mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in foreign as well as well, the national, national team. team. So that's what I'm trying to bring into the club. Right. And the only way they can get those things is from the youth players who are hungry mm. and ready to play football. Mm, mm. Experienced players are very important as well. Right. It matters a lot. Right. We ourselves, when we came to Olympics, we were very young, 16, 15. Mm. We were blended with experienced players. Fabian Asiedu, Amwata, you are name them. But they were ready to do what? Work. Mm. Experienced players who are not ready to work, they are important. But if they are not ready to work mm. with character mm. to train the young ones, mm. then they are not needed in the team. Right. Because football is all about working, staying focused, mentally, desiring to play, which is very important in life. So I told the experienced players, blend up with the youth. So Olympics can have all those national team players as well for the team to do what groom up again and come back to their mm. normal mm. position mm. in Ghana football. Mm. Others understand too. Others still don't understand. But right now, trust me, they really do understand. Really so it's good that challenges will come for people to be on the right mm. side. Okay. So for you, the critics actually, they motivate you, they, they get you on your toes, they get you to do me, more. Yeah. That's, that's actually a very good one. That's actually a very good one. Now let's talk about what's happening now after sports. After you said, you, could, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with professional football for yourself. What is really happening? We know you have the academy, but um, first of all, how many, how many um, team players do you have on the academy? I have almost about 45 to 50 players now on board. How many did you start with? Uh, I started with, uh, first I started with uh, around 20 boys. 20. Yeah, and now we have almost about 50. Mm. With, uh, including the U12 mm -hmm. up to U20. Oh, okay. How do you do your selection? Is it that the parents bring their walls to your U? I don't know, how do you do it? How do you do your well, selection? Well, actually, uh, this soccer academy is, is free. Mm. It's for street boys, children who really need help mm. and want to play football mm. which is very important mm. because that's what uh, the poor guys are really lacking to enter into the football right. rich guys doesn't like football that much but nowadays they are into football so what i do normally is that i'm here with coach Ebendazi, mm. who is that. also an ex uh, black star player yeah. before when he was in the Olympic team under 23, I was in the soccer academy. But here we are, we are together now. Yeah. He's my assistant coach here. Yeah. Actually, the one taking care of the U20 mm, up to mm, 17, mm. and then I take it from there. Mm. Sometimes I come to do the tactical work for them, which is very European way. Okay. Uh, for the okay. skill work, 
he can do it. Can but do the it. European tactical way and the mind, psych me and everything, I do that okay. for the boys because they really need it. So what we do is that a uh, um, group of people as a scouts. Mm, okay. And as you know already that this academy has been established. We have been gained the exposure even in foreign land. Mm, we mm, have won mm, cup mm, there mm, and mm. everything. So we already know now. Mm. So people have been calling mm. by themselves. Mm. Parents have been calling. Mm. We have our kids who want to play football mm. and all these kind of things. What we do right now is whenever they bring the kids or let's say a football club like coast club mm -hmm. they bring their 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 boys mm. like five or six mm. we will put them on trial and uh, when the trial is going on their parents give them the food give them money for the food pay for the food because those days i used to do it free and a lot of players come to eat and then they go so they pay for the food while the rooms are free oh, okay. they sleep here for free wow. till we pick them Wow. In six months, mm. we can tell Who, if right. the boy can make it or not. in the academy or not. Oh, okay. So this is how we go about our structure here, okay. which is very, very important. Very so if we have seen that, hey, come on, you are not a, a player who can make it to the top mm. or have the mindset to play football, we send you away. You don't because it's time. strictly for footballers. Right. It's not just for soccer academy that uh, uh, parents can come and dump, dump children the and then pay money and then they go. No, okay. that's why I'm able to have 50 talented boys. 50 talented, talented boys. boys. That's, that's actually, that's actually so very good. So this is one. how you we go, go about, about your selection. Yes. Right, so you, I, I realize that most of the ex-footballers, um, if they set up an academy, they themselves coach and do everything. So I was wondering, okay, how come we're able to do it? And then you have another person. Yeah, exactly. Now, you even mentioned that the rooms that the boys sleep in are for free. Please tell us, do you have sponsorship coming from outside or something? Yeah, as I told you before from the beginning, that mm. uh, my godfather, who is with Peter, mm. a divisa, mm. a Chelsea scout. Mm. He made me who I am today from scratch. Oh, okay. Yeah. He made me who I am today. Everything mm. that I've, I've gained in football in my career mm. is the one who is behind it. Mm. Because he took me to PSV in Loving. Mm. I made all, a lot of money. I went to a uh, Middle East. He's behind me with advice and everything. And then when I'm about to end my career, he's there also to tell me that, hey, come on, my boy, do the soccer academy, I'll support you. Oh. So he's the one who is behind the academy. He has oh. been supporting me with the little that I was able to make in football. Right. As I'm talking to you now, we normally travel every year okay. to a tournament in Europe. Okay. Okay. Um, we just won a, a cup last year, wow. under 20 in Holland. Mm. We played two tournaments. Mm. We're supposed to, to win both, but mm. uh, the other way around, there was a fatigue um, among the boys and mm. we, we, we lost one cup, but Why? we were able to bring one. This year, actually, we are supposed to go to um, next gen, no, sorry, not next gen, a Toulon tournament in France. Mm. But um, we had a discussion and I decided that no, come on. I really need a, a sports complex, mm. which is very important. Mm. Here is good for training, mm. but I need a real sports, sports complex, complex like wow. stadium wow. that we will train and then also play matches. Wow. So I canceled the trip and better to put that money Into, to build up wow. the stadium. Wow. So that's the planning now that this year we are not be able to go to a tournament because mm -hmm. I'm already aware for those who are supposed to go outside now and sign the contract. Mm -hmm. I have already marked them. Mm -hmm. They have been the exposure mm -hmm. in jail. Everyone have already seen those who are supposed to go outside now and sign the contract. The new one are now coming. They need one or two years more to graduate to the top. Okay. So there's no need for this tournament. Mm -hmm. It's better to put the money in the, the, into that's, the that's actually project a very, of the stadium. A very, very so wise, that's the planning That's actually a very now. wise thing to do. Right, you're married. How long has it been? Uh, about 18 to 20 years now. Okay, how many when kids do you have? Wow. <laughs> yeah, we wow. all went to the same school. Oh, okay. Yeah. Me and my wife went to the same school. Wow. So we've been married for like 20 years. Yes. How many kids do you have? We have uh, three kids. Three kids. One boy who is part of the soccer academy. Yeah. And then two daughters. Oh, okay. Wow. That's, that's beautiful. How, how old is the, the oldest? The older one is 15 years. 15 years. 
I see. Now, apart from, I mean, we all know you have the academy. Apart from the academy, what else, what else do you have? What other investments do you have? We have an uh, hospitality business. Mm -hmm. That one has already been built a long time ago, about 15 years ago. Where? Uh, it's around race course. Okay. The Debbie Royal Hotel. Okay. Yeah, and then after that, there are some projects here and there. What project? As we want you know. to know. We want to know what project. <laughs> you know, you can't disclose everything. I know, but just give us because you know we, 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 we want to know because most most people come there and then you realize that where to put the money is either a problem or they are not able to manage their funds well and before you realize they are not living the kind of life they envision they will be living after the end of their career. So if you're able to you are able to do something we, we want to know so that you tell us how you went about it. Yeah you and are then, you are right about that mm. and I feel pity really for mm. for those who uh, such things happen to them sure but uh, it's from scratch you know mm -hmm. if you really know where you came from you have to know that planning has to do what be the key mm. in your life mm. and always you have to try to put up your mind on certain things that football is just for 35 years mm. or up to 40 right nothing more and that's the training i'm giving to the boys mm. The new generation now in our country really need people like us to train them because the problem that a lot of ex footballers have faced, the new ones they doesn't, shouldn't. They shouldn't, they shouldn't have faced that problem. Mm. So they really need us. And to all listeners, as well as football manageria mm. uh, 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 people, mm. they have to understand that they need ex footballers who have been to the top mm. to come and do what? Help them mm. manage their clubs. Mm. It will bring a whole lot mm. for the clubs. Right, because that's basically what this show is about. You want to know what's going on after your glorious days. And you know, maybe you have a word or two for those who are already playing and those who are upcoming. How? Because there are times I've heard stories of someone will be out there suffering and will trust maybe a wife, a brother, a friend to maybe put up an establishment for the person before they come that there is nothing to show for. Yeah, actually, I was blessed mm. and very lucky. I have only two sisters. And uh, my parents, that's my mom and my dad, dad. they are not people who really cause these problems. Mm. They understand me, mm. my way of living. Mm. I was well trained. Mm. And then I also got a godmother who is called uh, Mrs. Abeka. Mm. She's late. Okay. She trained me. Mm -hmm. yeah, like you a mentioned, woman. Yeah, you yeah. mentioned her before. She tra I know how to cook everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I does it by myself right. in the foreign land. Mm. So a lot of projects that I did is from my wife. Okay, wow. Yeah, wow. she's the one who did it. So the best thing I will tell them is that, uh, like the way I started with my wife from scratch, I was nobody, really nobody. She stood behind me mm. till I got where I am right now. Okay. And she's the one who did all my project work. Mm. So if you don't have anyone, it's better you keep your money. And whenever you come by yourself, you come and do it, mm -hmm. than to entrust in someone, someone give someone. everything to the person, and then at the end, mm. you have a problem. Okay. Actually, this, this project, I did it by myself. Okay. Because I was, I, I, I was already about to end the career in foreign land oh, okay. and come to Ghana. So this one, I did it. Okay. But the other projects, yes, she, did she did it. My houses, everything, my parents' houses, a mom's house, you everything. Say, you say houses she like there, you have about 20 houses. <laughs> you know, we, don't, we don't mind knowing how many houses you, you have, you know. I have, but the one I've mentioned is what I have. <laughs> You don't know, but you just had houses. You don't know whether they are five or twenty or fifty. Or the you are scared we will ask you to give us one. Is the one I have. We won't ask but you to actually, give us one. Actually, this is the, the main big. This is the main one. How, how old is this building in there? This has been only, oh, I think, two years. Two years? Oh, yeah. okay. There's right. a hostel right. Right. that uh, can bring fans mm, mm. to take care of the boys. Mm, mm. There's a gym. Mm. So there are facilities in here mm. that can bring mm. fans. To take, to take, take care, care of, of the, the boys. Of the boys. All right, so, so what's the future? What's the future like for the boys? Well, uh, sometimes we try to bring up the things, but mm. a lot will depend on them. Okay. I am bringing all the 
exposure things that they, they need, need. Mm. stand on right. and do the job mm. so it's really open mm. you know you can give birth to about five ten but it's not all of them who will be able to make it That's true. so the planning is that it's not everyone who can go to Europe. Mm. That's why I decided before it's only the academy that I'm managing. Okay. okay. But after the Olympics incident, mm. I decided that hey, come on, it's better I play the league, as already some people really mm. advise me on mm. that. Mm. I decided to play the league because I realized that hey, you can't really put those who can go to Europe, mm. develop them through some clubs in Ghana because that's they true. don't understand. They don't understand the system, that's true. So it's better I play the league, even if the boy is 15 years and he can match up with the big boys, I put him in, it's my own club. That's true. To gain the structure, that's true. the belief, the confidence, the motivation, desiring and everything before he get to the top. Okay. You see the boys I training. See them. I saw them. In one year or two years, believe me, they will match up with the big ones. Mm. Because of what? The they are training, already they are doing all to. kind of training mm. and I'll put them to play in the league with the bigger boys. Mm. So within a year or two, they are already there. So those that the scouts will come down or we go into the tournament and they will select it. They are the ones who will do what? Go to Europe. Okay. But the structure and everything is for Europe. Oh, okay. Okay. So the future is actually very, very exactly right for the kids is there any huge thing we should expect from in the next few years anything huge that we yeah, should expect from me. your camp yeah um in the next few years believe me at ram tv sasoka academy about four or five players will reign in the national black star team. and then under 17 and under 20 as well wow. as i'm talking to you right now they just ended uh, the trial period for the national under 17 boys mm. everyone in the country national soccer academy a lot brought their players and by god's grace we selected about eight players from a transit soccer academy. Wow. so you can tell I, i'm course. not the one to say anything and those who selected mm. they are really happy with the structure that you of the academy that. Right. So I thank God for everything. We thank As God. At today, I told you, it's not about playing the World Cup, but it's about who, what you can do in your life. That's true. All right. All right. So now your final words to the young and upcoming players. Well, I think I would like to urge them mm. on one thing mm. that uh, they should believe in themselves, right. which is very important. Mm. The key in football as well as the character aspect and then also do what listening to the coaches mm. go to school as well mm. which we all need in our life mm. they shouldn't talk about uh, stopping school and playing football no 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 no, no. because football now is all about teaching mm. and if you don't have the knowledge mm. and the wisdom it will be difficult for you to make it up to the top. Mm. So they should stay focused also as well in school and then take their training seriously mm. as well as the discipline aspect, mm. which is very, very important. important. And I would like to plead with all Ghanaians chairmen who are managing football to understand the way that football has changed. The kids or the playing body and the players as well are their friends. Mm. We don't have, I am bigger mm. than the player. Mm. Because without the player, you are not a management mm. in the football fraternity. Mm. 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 So they should respect the players, even at the tender age. Because they will one day do what? Become a superstar. Right. And there, you face the problem with the player. That's true. I am the president of Atran Visa Academy and the coach as well. Mm. I live with them like brothers. Yeah, so how you relate to them. It's very, very important. Yeah. So they have to relate very well to the players. Mm. And this is where they will really see the talents in the boys mm. than what they are seeing now. Yes. And people are really talking a lot about Ghanaians are short of what? Talent. Talent no, true. never. 
Never. We all came from here. Mm. I bet the Pele them all started in Ghana. Mm. They were born in Ghana. Mm. Shamokwe, Jodebra, them. So, uh, everybody. And we also came. Mm. ACN them came. They did them came. So how come can we talk that talents are no more in Ghana? Talents are here. But the way we are going to manage them and train them by respecting the coaches, giving them all that they needed so they won't collect money from the boys mm. and train them accordingly in the style that what they will become someone like us in future. Mm. That's all I have for that. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> so we'll be right back after this one. The challenge of the day is brought to you by Davis Palace, who was the first Ghanaian footballer to miss a penalty at the FIFA World Cup. Again, who was the first Ghanaian footballer to miss a penalty at the FIFA World Cup? The winner gets a voucher for a massage, pedicure, manicure, gym, hairdo, and many more at Davis Palace. So that was a very good segment with Godwin Atram. I mean, he has been a very educative and helpful, and I know and I hope that if you're a young and upcoming footballer, you've learned a lot. And I would want to say a very big thanks to David's Palace inside East Legon for making this show a success from my hair, makeup, and the vouchers that you are winning for answering the questions are coming from them. It's been a very good time with you. My name is Mamiaja, and we'll see you next week.